Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the jewel of the Chinesium work light market, the reigning champ for five years running, the venerable Braun 390 Lumen work light. You've got one, your dad has one, I've got one. Every once in a while, Harbor Freight does nail something. In the interest of transparency, like all great Harbor Freight tools, this is a blatant ripoff of a name brand, in this case, the Astro 31 SL. This light was the go-to for years because firstly, it's cheap. Secondly, it folds. Ooh. And two, it has a removable 18650 battery. Ah. A lot of expensive lights don't have that. But the time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future, and the hits keep coming, and they don't stop coming, and the old girl is tuckered out. The on-off switch is becoming increasingly wonky. And the battery, that needed replacing on. And the hinge detent disintegrated, and it... Ah. Needed the old Frankenstein treatment. Bolt through the neck. And the charging port is wearing out. Don't you just love micro-USB? So does shop dust. So, for $30, I could replace this like for like, or for the same $30 with a coupon, or you can pay $40 regular price without a coupon like a schmuck. You can get the Icon model with 800 lumens. For the price difference, a true pittance, really, the Icon seems to blow the brawn away. Runtime's rated at 3 hours on high, a half hour more than the brawn. Is that accurate? It's in the package, isn't it? They wouldn't dare put inaccurate specs on the package, and I challenge the honor of any man who dares to defy the Harbor Freight marketing wizards. Both lights run on a single 18650, so the claim that you can get more than double the output while also getting more runtime, it's really impressive. Another upside to the Icon? Well, the Braun only folds 90 degrees, which was fine for versatility. I never found a position it couldn't illuminate for me when I needed it most. But it made it a hassle to store in a small toolbox. The Icon, it folds 180 degrees. It also has a 3 LED charge status indicator that the manual makes no mention of for some reason. Ooh, it has memory. If you turn it off after having it in one setting for five seconds, it powers back on straight to that setting. It's cool, but it means it has to have a microprocessor, which means the Chinese government can probably track you and turn your frogs gay. So there you have it. The Icon is more powerful, more flexible, has better endurance. I mean, game over. Nice knowing you, Braun. But wait, what is this? There were some disadvantages to this old light that Harbor Freight fixed with this new version, what seems to be an attempt to cannibalize the sales of the Icon. Three hours is impressive, but real world talk, nobody with my attention span is going to notice 30 minutes anyway. I mean, besides professionals, but their eternal soul is most likely already the exclusive property of their Snap-on dealer. What's better than 30 extra minutes of runtime? How about a removable battery? And a bucket full of spares. Free with the flashlight. So basically, you can choose between three hours or infinity plus two and a half hours. Kind of an easy choice. But is it that simple? The Icon may only get 30 more minutes on high than the Braun, but remember, the Icon is doing almost double the brightness as the Braun on high, so maybe I'm wrong. The Icon claims that the rear light is 500 lumens on high, and that'll run for four and a half hours, which would be checkmate, but I don't know who's counting those lumens because it's not close to the Braun's 500 lumens. Maybe those are metric lumens? The point remains, even if it could pull an extra two hours on the Braun at the same brightness, 
it's still not as good as having a replaceable battery. Psst, Icon, you put the cob on the wrong side. Also, you forgot to make it swivel. The bronze swivels, and it folds 360 degrees, which is at least 100 degrees more than the Icon, and that's a fact. I do like this little light on the back. I'm not sure what it's for, but it's a neat idea. I'd really like to see them make this with a warmer color LED on the back, something more pleasing to the eye, with less blue, maybe in the 3500 to 4K range. Something good for reading. Warmer light isn't as bright, but it's already way dimmer than the front, so I see no reason not to have the extra application. White light is useful for work. It's just, for reading, it's so harsh. I was not a fan of the chintzy micro USB port on the old Braun. The Icon uses the more robust and reversible USB-C, so score one for Icon. But wait, the new Braun also has USB-C now. So, hey, advantage neutralized. A direct comparison between these three isn't really fair. These two have brand new factory fresh batteries. This one, it's running off of old Sanyo cells I scavenged from my wife's old laptop. Sorry, honey bunny. But since no flashlight review is complete without a light test, I'm gonna use the old mullet mobile here to get a watchable time lapse. The tinted T-tops will block enough light for the camera to actually see something. All three are fully charged. The Icon just squeaked out a victory here, but she is dead dead. The old Brawn, it's got some autonomic post-mortem twitching like a freshly shot squirrel. Mm, but she's dead dead too. The new Brawn seems to have been playing possum. I'll have to see how long this lasts on a second wind in a bonus round. I repeated that over and over until I got bored and got 90 bonus seconds until the low battery voltage protection circuit tripped. Not bad, but remember, while the Braun almost tied the Icon, it did so with 300 fewer lumens. That just solidifies the Icon's victory here. The old Braun, running in 390 lumen mode with a two-year-old aftermarket 2600 milliamp hour battery, managed a still respectable two hours and six minutes. The new Braun running in 500 lumen mode with the factory fresh 2200 milliamp hour battery lasted a whopping 3 hours and 2 minutes. Not only is that 30 minutes longer than advertised, it's almost an hour longer than the old Braun while putting out more light with a smaller, albeit newer, battery. Fortunately, the Icon saves face by running in 800 lumen mode with its 2600 milliamp hour battery for 4 minutes longer than the Braun. Doesn't sound like much, but remember, it's putting out much more light than the Braun, so it's still a solid win. The fact of the matter is, if this 390 lumen light will light up the undercarriage of a greasy old truck like the 4th of July, 500 will probably impart some sort of ocular damage. So is 800 actually useful, or is it for bragging rights? I don't really think anybody needs more than 500 lumens in a work light. You're lighting up the cabinet under the sink or crawling under some machinery. You're not landing an airliner at 2 a.m. These magnetic bases are super handy, but which one is stronger, you ask? Well, I'm going to utilize the ANSI certified dihydrogen monoxide load tension test, aka bucket of water, some string, and a postal scale. Very simply, add water until she lets go, and then weigh the bucket.
What, you think I'd let my brand new light fall in the water? Eleven point nine nine. Let's be nice. Let's call it twelve pounds. Now the icon's turn. Well, that was fast. Seven and three carters, much less than the brawny brawn. I could forgive that loss if the icon was significantly lighter than the brawn, but it's basically the same. Pound for pound, the brawn can hold 24 times its own weight, and the icon can hold 16 times its own weight. If any of this matters, it's probably that. The sturdy aluminum body on both is the correct color for greasy garage tools. Thank you, Harbor Freight. Looking at you, DeWalt in Milwaukee, and basically anyone who tries to make their tools look cool, they just look like shit after the first week of honest use. I prefer the raised button on the brawn to this flush, mushy, rubber padded push button. It's just not satisfying in the hand, nor is it easy to find in the dark. You know, when you might need a flashlight. It's also a little annoying having to press it six times to cycle all the way through the settings. Dog help you if you miss the first off setting and you have to cycle through all over again to turn it off. Gives me the strangest sense of deja vu. Something similarly frustrating from my childhood. What was it? On the other hand, the rest of the icon just feels nicer. The brawn feels more like something cold and heavy, a blunt object to throw at the mummers during the Christmas parade. The cable the icon comes with is also higher quality and the packaging was nicer and, y you know, I anticipate the hinge mechanism loosening up and flopping around. I'm not dumping on Harbor Freight quality here, but it's gonna happen. You know it's true. The old one did and this one is double jointed, so double the failure points. One aspect where the sturdier hinge materials on the icon should be superior. First on the docket is the brawn here. Removable battery, again, nice. These were almost impossible to get apart clean. This knurled nut is <clears throat> epoxyed on from the factory. They do not want you getting into these for some reason. Hey look, I found a use for the manual. Gotta protect the finish here. <clears throat> and yes, a pipe wrench and a microfiber cloth. Those are the proper disassembly tools. <clears throat> oh no, my new flashlight. You guys owe me a flashlight. I'm doing this for you. We'll get you looking brand new, old girl. Don't worry about it. This will fool the folks at Harbor Freight. As long as I have my receipt. I don't want to just unscrew at the top half here, because there's going to be wires passing through the hinge. Nice o-ring. Not sure why you need that if you're going to epoxy the threads anyway. Little delicate connector. This broke on my old bronze, so definitely somewhere to look if your light dies completely, even though the charging LED still works. There's this little aluminum screw ring that retains the electronicals. Here's the board, pretty simple. Just power in a generic two cent momentary push button switch and some crude power conditioning and some resistors. And if anyone else has issues with the switch wearing out, let me know in the comments. I can make a DIY repair video on that. Here's the reverse side. This looks like a completely separate circuit dedicated to charging and maintaining the 18650 probably. Not the prettiest PCB, clearly hand soldered in a country where you can shoot a cow with a bazooka for 50 bucks, but it's very well packaged anyway. Moving on to the tip, you can see this is the same hinge arrangement as the old style of run, just more. Four silver fasteners holding the light bar to the hinge. Take note that this first one is a screw thread, and the other three are all bolt threads. 
So that's fucking weird. I just... I, how, why? There's one of the two plastic detent balls. Metal would have been nice, but worst comes to worst, I'll just give this one the Frankenstein treatment when it inevitably wears out too. And then it'll last forever. I was starting to doubt my dis, dis deconstructive aptitude, but wait, two hidden screws. Remove the nut and here's another O-ring. Oh, I'm going to regret taking this hinge apart. I'm going to sit these down very ginger carefully. Those wires are staying right where they are. Slide the nice aluminum, not plastic, housing off. And here is the star of the show. I tried Googling this part number for specs. Bupkiss. Here's the little tip. No, not that one. He's currently taking a nap inside. No lens or anything, and... Oh, that was a dainty solder joint. <sighs> and I lost a detent ball. That's fine. Life with one ball is... Well... Moving on to the icon, and already the difference is stark. First, the screws are all metric, hexagonal flavored. Two and a half millimeters. Off comes the battery holder. Unfortunately, more disassembly is required to actually remove the battery. So it is totally user serviceable, but it's not something you do on the fly like you can with the brawn. A couple more screws to remove. They even put in a split washer to preload the hinge. It's the extra 0 .002 cents that makes a girl feel special. Off comes the hinge. Nice. In addition to all the fasteners being standardized throughout the unit, the circuit board is gorgeous. Here's the battery disconnect. Unless you can find one with the same connector, it's probably easier just to cut and splice the wires to a generic cell. Oh, it's a push tab. This board is basically the same functionally as the Braun, just much nicer. Heavier duty push button, cleaner solder pads, but some reinforcement on the four output wires. That wouldn't hurt. Here's the reverse. Gorgeous, robotically soldered components. And the solder is also much shinier. Me likey shiny. Three surface mount LEDs for the charge indicator. Heavily reinforced USB-C port. Oh, look, I love Harbor Freight crap, but it's rare that I gush over the actual quality of the components. This PCB belongs in a much pricier flashlight. This is so much easier to get apart than the Braun. I like that. I like the fasteners too. Nice black anodized or oxidized or something. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. Ah, oh, there's another one. Oh no, one different sized screw. Looks like a two millimeter. Nice to see the other end is reinforced anyway. That's the part that moves, so that's good. Nice little projector lens on the tip. Should throw much better than the brawn. I'm gonna lose that too. It's on its own separate little PCB board hard soldered onto the main LED cob assembly. Looks very nice. Now, how do you get the housing off? Ah, just yank it. I can do that. Polycarbonate lens cover, which is hard, but not very heat resistant. So the old beat up brawn over there would make the better welding or grinding light. It's not any more heat resistant. It's just, well, you know, I don't want to insult her. She's right there. She can hear me. Much nicer cob. Stands for circuit on board. I can't even see the individual LEDs. It looks like an Apple product. I mean, Apple may not always make the better stuff, but you gotta admit, they do make the nicest looking stuff. And this is gorgeous. Quick fix for those bothered by the fact that the cob faces the wrong way. That little hole there, 
you can embiggen it with a slightly larger drill bit or grind off the plastic nubs. Otherwise, when you flip it around, the screw holes don't quite line up. I still think it's a bad design element in an otherwise primo light. I'm not tossing the old girl out. She'll be my backup light for the garage, but her old spot in the front of the toolbox belongs to this now. The Icon, it can live in the house. It's IPX4 rated, which basically means you can take it in the shower during a power outage or use it under a leaky pipe or take it out in the rain. So the Braun is my winner for garage work. They're both great lights. The Icon is just, it's too nice. I'll keep the Icon in for the home and for the glove box, you know. It's my go into town light, but they're both great lights. You're not a fool for buying the more expensive Icon over the equally useful Braun, but Harbor Freight might be a fool for making them so competitive with each other. Thanks for watching.